Not one person mm. who preached the one saved, always saved, is on fire for Christ. <laughs> Wait a minute. I beg your pardon. <laughs> they create a caricature, I think, of what people who believe in eternal security are actually saying. That's really an attack on individual Christians that may hold to this. You know what I mean? Like, that's actually an attack on them. I don't quite agree with a lot of his doctrine and his things, but that's neither here nor there. But I do think this video that he put out has some very, uh, very dangerous things for us as followers of Christ. In this conversation of once saved, always saved. And I know many people we have in this chat, on this channel, that believe, and I don't even use the phrase once saved, always saved, but the phrase we're looking for really is eternal security. It's really that simple, <laughs> eternal security. And so let me, first off, and again, not, not being mean, but this is always, I always find this interesting. This is what God showed me type of terminology that you see on these channels for like SEO and stuff. So you see a lot of people do these type of clickbait. It's what God showed me about true salvation you know, what God showed me. And so immediately I see some red flags in it um, that would concern me because once you start saying God told you something, especially the novice young follower of Christ will come in taking you as an authority. And so it's no doubt at all, if God showed you something and God showed, if, and you put that all in throughout the video, we're going to take you as an authority on it. And so if you say anything that deviates away from scripture, then there's some pretty serious implications on this. So I just want to start off by saying, and I say this out of a place of love, that this is dangerous already without even playing a simple <laughs> video. And I see some of the things you all are saying. I just want to use this really as something for us to keep in mind and be cautious of in our own walks with God, but also really in, when we're trying to get out a message, how we need to be very delicate. And I'm not going to make any claims against him. I know some people you know, are talking about his doctrine. I'm not making any claims about his doctrine outside of what he says here. I'm going to take this video and I'm just going to respond to it. I'm going to just see where certain logic on certain themes and, and doctrines can take you. And so let's check it out. Peace and blessings, peace and blessings. Smart the messenger, we're back in the video. This one's gonna be about once saved, always saved. Is it biblical? I get people asking this question all the time. And I'm gonna be showing you guys the dangers of once saved, always saved. But before I get on with it, I'm gonna show you guys when I first heard of once saved, always saved, it was back in 2019, 2018. Let me slow this, let me slow this down just a little bit real quick. Cause I feel like it's a little too fast. I'm gonna stop it every time I feel like he says something that's eh. It. I'm gonna show you guys when I first heard of Once Saved Always Saved. It was back in 2019, 2018, around that time, and it didn't align with me. Even back when I was a sheep, when I was simple minded, I'm a shepherd now, but back when I was a sheep, I was simple minded. It was more easily. So he's calling himself a shepherd. So when usually when someone says shepherd, I take it as pastor. So he's saying he's a pastor. So let's keep that in mind. Deceived by false teachers, false prophets. So I always made sure to read my Bible for myself, which I advise all you guys to do as well, to make sure whatever you're learning is aligned with God's word. So people would tell me, oh no, um, you know, you don't have to be holy. You don't have to, you know, be, you know, be fired up because once they always say there's no one who's on fire. Well, let me say this. So he's already saying, again, I'm going to, you're going to see my cards as we go on that. And I'll tell you all where I stand on the once saved, always saved, eternal security versus uh, you can lose your salvation. I'll tell you all where I, where I stand and you'll see my cards as we go. But right off the bat, he's saying people telling him you don't have to be holy to be saved. And the way he's kind of framing these wordings and all of that stuff, a lot of times they create a caricature, I think, of what people who believe in eternal security are actually saying. And it actually distracts away. When you frame it as once saved, always saved, when you frame it as, oh, you can do whatever and still be saved, I think it actually distracts away from the heart of that doctrine. So I just want to put that out there again. You can straw man a doctrine or you can steal man someone's viewpoint. I can steal man by saying, hey, this is what they're actually saying. Deal with the actual claims of it. Or I can straw man and say, oh, they're saying we shouldn't be holy. They're saying we shouldn't obey to God. We should d disobey God and we'll still go to heaven or be saved. So let's continue. Fire free Christ that's preaching one saved always saved. I'm letting you know this right now. Not one person mm. who preaches one saved always saved is on fire for Christ. Okay. So there are a lot. Of... <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Come on now. Wait. Come on, Time man. Out. You that claim. What do you? Okay. So here's another issue that we see. So and you see this typically with and I'm I'm from the charismatic side of things. I don't identify as that currently. Like I don't use those words anyway to describe me and my wife. We got to try to be as close to the Bible as I can on it. But think about it. He said this. He has, he does, he said he doesn't know a single or doesn't believe a single person that believes once saved, always saved is on fire for God. Let's play it again to make sure I get the exact words. Once saved, always saved. I'm going to let you know this right now. Not one person who preaches once saved, always saved is on fire for Christ. Okay. What does the on fire for Christ means? First off, again, on fire for Christ isn't even really biblically accurate way to put it. This on fire for Christ 
is very subjective because you might say being on fire for Christ is you are constantly shouting and speaking in tongues out in public in service or you're constantly posting scriptures on social media or making videos like him. That that would be his that might be his way of describing it. Whereas someone else might say, you know, I'm reading the Bible, I'm studying it, I'm getting proper understanding, I'm, you know, sir, what it's just such a subjective line for that. And he is not the arbit arbitrator of who's on fire for God. That's totally opinionated. So one, that's not even, that's really an attack on individual Christians that may hold to this. You know what I mean? Like that's actually an attack on them to say, you you don't believe they are on fire for Christ. You don't know a single one. Well, what does it matter if you don't know? Does that mean there isn't any? Just because someone may have this that you've seen? I, guess what? People could take the stance, and I'm pretty sure he's charismatic because he talks about the gifts of the spirit and all of that stuff and tongues and all that stuff. What if someone said, I don't know a single charismatic or person from that that has good doctrine? <laughs> you know, that would really be tough. That'd be messed up. You know what I mean? You say a charismatic, you don't know a single charismatic that uh, sound has sound doctrine. That would be, first off, it would be untrue. Just because you have a doctrinal stance doesn't mean that you're not solid on the Bible or you're not solid in the other areas of the Bible. So that's kind of where we, we have to learn how to, one, differ on things and you know, be charitable with especially non-essential issues. Now, this is, this one, if we're not careful, and what, what we'll find, and you'll watch this video, some of the conclusions in these non-essential things can really dabble in the essential area. Area. So check this out. Check out what he says. And what that what that would teach me when I first heard it is that you know I don't have to live a life of repentance. I could just live however I want because Jesus, Jesus did uh, die on the cross for me. Uh, I could believe that you know I could be disobedient. Uh, I could go back to my vomit and there's no consequences. There's pretty much there's no consequences of sin. There's no judgment. Uh, there's no conviction. But when I would read the Bible, I will get conviction over and over again. When I was doing wrongdoing, when I was sin, like even the smallest sin, I'll get convicted. And I really love God. So I'm going to do my best I can to honor him. You know. Because so my question would be, how is one, one saved, always saved, contradicting that? <laughs> you know, that's that would be my pushback then. How is one saved, always saved, con or eternal security contradicting that idea? If, if we're saying that there is security in those that truly believe, if if I make that claim, there is true security of salvation to one that truly believes, that doesn't contradict it. And here's why. Because I believe someone that truly is saved will repent. Because I think repentance goes hand in hand with placing your faith in Jesus. I believe placing faith in Jesus is the act of repentance and renouncing sin. So that's for starters. But I, again, we're just taking them. I want you all to catch this one part. Because love is an action. You know, I could say easily out of my mouth that I love God, but what are my, what are my actions backing it up? That's why even Christ taught us. He says that if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And a lot of people have the spirit of error in them, so they're not able to accept it. A lot of people have been given, even, you know, Christians. And then here's the other thing, too. We have to also be careful with, um, we have to be careful how we speak on these things. Like, I'm not going to go too hard on him, but like he's saying Christians that believe this had a spirit of error auto automatically, but I don't think he's actually understood because I was like this in some ways, maybe not to this extreme. I wouldn't go out, jump out a window as far as maybe him. But I was like this where I had an opinion on certain things. I'd be like, yeah, you, you know, you can definitely lose your salvation, this, this, and that. But I was a lot more charitable with it. And I was just like, hey, I have concerns about what I think this doctrine is. And then the more I hear, hear it, I'm like, oh, okay, they're not saying this. They're not saying that. There is a different, they're, they're pointing to certain scriptures and it makes sense where they're coming from then. So that helped me to understand. And now I actually can you know, correctly represent who, even if I disagree, I'm not saying I do, but I'm saying even if I did disagree, I can actually see and represent that side. And that's one of the constants that I think we as followers of Christ lack in. We lack in our ability to correctly represent those that we disagree with. We have to really take the time out to understand why somebody is false or why a teaching is false before we speak on the teaching. Now, I'm not even going out of the limb to say that what he's going to present I'm going to tell you why his is false, but I'm not going to go out of my way to demonize him, but I'm just going to take him at his words and why they're all even by the Bible and why we got to be very careful with this. And he, you know, says he's a shepherd and this is why you got to really study your Bible. That have been given over to reprobated mind because they reject the truth. Okay. So I'm not here to preach to those type reprobate of people. Mind. I'm here to preach to the meek, the humble, the lost, uh, those who are in bondage to Satan's kingdom. Isaiah chapter 61, verse six. So let's get it. Let's go. Once saved, always saved. Okay. This is the dangers of believing in that deception. Okay. Number one thing about one saved, always saved, is that it pretty much lets you know that there's no sin. There's no judgment for your sins. And, you know, what's the point? You know, if you, have, if you believe one saved, always saved, then, you know, what's sin? It doesn't matter. You can live however you want because you're saved. So he said no sin. There's no judgment for your sin. See, the, the, uh, same point. I, I could just literally, you could literally, literally rewind and I'll say the same point. Are you accurately representing 
people that believe in eternal eternal security? And the answer would be no. You're saying there's no judgment for sin. I don't think that they believe that. I think what, what they're saying is, okay, here's how I put it. As a follower of Christ, are you making the claim that you'll never sin again? Do you do you know, like, do all people that come to Christ never sin again? Is that an accurate statement? The answer is no. And we can even look in the scriptures, even those that were supposed to be the greatest example, who we follow the closest, the apostles. Think about Peter. Peter sinned after conversion. Paul sinned after conversion. The point is, and how Peter sinned, he showed favoritism toward the Jews over the Gentiles. When Jews came around, he acted funny toward the Gentiles. He sinned. He was in error. And Apostle Paul corrected him came into his face in public. So my point is, you can still sin as a follower, follower of Christ. That's the first thing. And so if we're not careful, now we're going to play a different game. And that different game would be, how many times do I have to sin to lose my salvation? If I sin X amount of times, do I lose my salvation? If I sin to the same sin, how many times? The Bible doesn't seem to give a number as to how many times we sin and he won't we won't we lose our salvation that never is touched on in scripture so why would we speak on something that scripture doesn't speak on number one so that's one of my first biggest apprehensions to people who believe in like just completely you can lose your salvation they misrepresent the idea of sin and believers it's not to say that we should strive to sin but definitely the holy spirit is working in us he's working in us to not sin and to do what god desires of us and for us to live the life, the best life that we could possibly live in him, in Christ Jesus. It's the work of the spirit that convicts us, that corrects us and is our teacher. That's very important, but I think we got to be very careful with this. Let's continue. Man, I, it's no way we're finishing this video because I'm only two minutes in and I've already had so much to say. <laughs> Well, you know, if you, have, if you believe once saved, always saved, then, you know, what's sin? It doesn't matter. You can live however you want because you're saved. And that's a strong deception in Christianity because Jesus himself says that he who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. So as, as they are making this video, no one is saved. He who Do y'all hear that? Did y'all just hear what he said? I beg your pardon? Did y'all you, did just hear what this man said? Let me run this back. I want to make sure y'all hear this. Please tell me y'all caught that. Himself says that he who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. So as, as they are making this video, no one is saved. He who he said, as of this day, which was two days ago, man, please, uh, bro, you make this video on the last, he made sure he got it all out uh, before the new year hit, because he's going to have to repent for that. He said, as of the making of this video, December 31st, no one is saved. Let's continue. I don't want to take them out of context. You were endear to the end, so you got to go through the trials and tribulations. When the mark of the beast comes, a lot of people are going to cave in and get it. You know, the, I think on Google it says there's over 2 billion people who are, you know, Christianity followers, right? But you really believe that 2 billion people or more than that are going to heaven? Okay, the way is narrow for a reason, okay? You got a lot of people who got... So, okay, <laughs> now he's going to talk about... Now he's going to talk about the COVID, the COVID jab stuff, whatever. That's whatever. That is a wild viewpoint. So, I could pull up the scriptures, but I'm just going to give you all just a brief explanation of the scripture he quoted. So, he brought up, I believe it was... It's two passages, but the one that I think I would all encourage you all to go to is Mark chapter 13, where he talks about he who endures to the end, the same will be saved. The problem with that passage is he's thinking about he who endures to the end will get salvation, like the salvation that it talks about in scripture that saves us. No, the salvation or the save, the way you be saved in that context is talking about the rapture. It's talking about the end times. If you go back and read the passage account of it in Matthew and especially in Mark, the first thing you'll realize real quick is that is not talking about salvation in the sense of like the salvation we receive in when we place our faith in Jesus, the one that comes by grace through faith. It is not talking about that. And it doesn't take a, it really doesn't take a genius to get that. And I'm saying this harshly because I've made that mistake in saying, you know, it's he who endures to the end. And you, it's all about endurance. It's all about endurance. It preaches really well, especially in uh, charismatic churches. Man, you got to endure. You got to go through the trials and tribulations, all that. And it sounds great. And there is truth to that. But that is not how you get salvation. That is talking about who God, who Jesus will rescue when it all said and done. We're talking about rapture because the context of that. And he is saying it is he who endures to the end in the context of the last day. So it's talking about the trials and tribulation. He's walking, Jesus is walking you through the end times. And it's all within that context. Those who endure to the end is referring to his elect. So that's a different type of save that he is speaking of. He's not talking about saved as in us having the Holy Spirit indwelled us because there's so many scriptures that clearly contradict that. Where if we have the Spirit dwelling in our hearts, we are saved unanimously. I think 
the grand thing I want us to gain out of this is whether, and so I, like I said, you, you all probably can kind of see my cards. I'm much more closer to the once say eternal security, if saved, always saved, once saved, always saved, whatever you want to speak on it with. I tend to have this belief that true Christians will endure to the end, so to speak, not in the context of semen. But I do have this viewpoint that if you're truly saved, then you're not, you don't lose your salvation. And I don't even know, like some people say, yeah, well, you can't lose your salvation. You forfeit it. And I'm not there yet. I'm not there with it. I was there. I did believe you could forfeit your salvation. Well, I've kind of been, I've kind of changed up on that. I don't know that I've seen a good scriptural case for forfeiting it. I know um, I've really looked at it and I haven't seen a clear case that you forfeit your salvation. Now, have people renounced their faith? And we see it all the time. We've seen it a lot of times, especially in the Christian YouTube space. We've reacted to videos of people that renounce their faith and things like that. So it's a lot more complex. It's a complicated conversation. This is one I'm not going to pretend. Like, I think I would love to see more YouTubers. I would love to see more people say, I don't know. I don't fully understand this. But this is the issue. This is the issue that we run into when we start talking about things so absolutely is now we're, he's taking the opposite viewpoint that you can lose your salvation. And there's many people, many scholars that have cases for this. And you can go and check those out for yourself, if you know what I mean. You can check all of those different viewpoints out on you can lose your salvation versus um, eternal security. You can look that up. But the bottom line is when you come in this and you start to strawman one side's argument, you start to really expose yourself because he has a totally unbiblical view Based on that, now maybe he misspoke, but he has a pretty unbiblical view of salvation to begin with, saying that as of this making of this video, none of us are saved. What does that mean? That contradicts so many scriptures. And I would hope, and I would, again, I'm a charitable person. I would say, yeah, hey, it's a video. He probably misspoke, but I think he doesn't, I think he has a bad idea of it. But when you make a video, what God showed you, and you're saying God showed you that no one is truly saved, then you're teaching a false teaching. And let's read this. The doctrine of once saved, always saved teaches that it is not possible for a child of God to sin in such a way that he will be lost. Many people who undoubtedly are very sincere and possess a desire to do what is right find, find tremendous comfort in this doctrine. This doctrine, however, is not taught in the Bible. Well, your doctrine isn't taught in the Bible, honestly. And man, I encourage you all to check this out for more. Like I said, I don't want, I didn't want to make this to dunk on him, but I think it's a very important conversation that we need to have in making sure we truly understand where someone's perspective and viewpoint in scripture is, actually understand it. That's where I'm coming from. So those are my thoughts on this. Let me know if, what you all think. It's a, definitely been a heated and exhausted debate on if you can lose your salvation or not. But leave a comment. Let me know if you uh, think he makes sense <laughs> or if you understand where he's coming from or if you think that this is a much more nuanced thing and he's not fairly representing it. But leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. But make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Uh, Glock's loaded as the opponent's I'm a reach. Stop sewing to get a bonus. That's a reach. I was born to meet the moment. So yeah. why? Feast. Your yeah. life. Feast. You know yeah. why? Feast. Glock's